Given South Africa's colonial, apartheid, and liberation history, it's my proposition that South Africa, although it's made critical progress, is inherently vulnerable, fragile, and maybe even unstable. Although at first glance this might seem to be a dire observation, in fact this is the condition of most nation states, and particularly those in transition or transformation, which as we study the global political economy is true of most countries. Barbara Tushman, the well-known popular American historian, in her book, The March of Folly, suggested that the definition of folly is when people take an action that is not in their interests while knowing better. This rudimentary definition is elaborated in a book by a study of a number of cases. The first is the well-known case of the Trojan horse. They should have known better. The second is George III, who gave away the largest, most productive landmass that became the United States of America over the mere trifle of a tea tax. There are times when I fear South Africa is in the grip of folly. At times I wonder whether we fully understood our dependence and interdependence on each other. This applies both at the level of citizens, the institutions that shape our political economy, and the three major formations and their interactions that I referred to earlier. The grand bargain that was struck at Cadessa and the period that followed it gave South Africans significant hope that at long last, after a long and exhausting process, we had come to grips as a nation with the form of a constitutional state and the establishment of an electoral democracy, a structure that would cause South Africa to find a new rhythm and produce dramatically different results. Of course, whether we have or not produced dramatically different results is a matter of contestation and debate as it should be. It is not contestable, I don't think, to argue as to whether we've made considerable progress. The central point of my argument, however, is that we've not made as much progress as we could have, nor as much as we hoped, nor as much as we need to. When thinking about the next 20 years, I must make a comment about a field which has occupied most of my time over many years, which is the field of strategy. Strategy as a word has its roots in the military. The word is Greek in origin. The word is Greek in origin. Napoleon's genius for repetitive battlefield victory, especially against the Prussians who never liked losing, led von Clausewitz to write his seminal work on war, in which he began using the word strategy, which was later appropriated by business and now included in many areas of life, including dating. <laughs> in recent years, I've become attracted to the concept of grand strategy, which also has its origins in military theory as well as international relations. Grand strategy is a comprehensive approach to understanding all the elements that shape an environment, and therefore the choices that leaders can make in terms of their broad goals and objectives. The school of structural realism says that actors are in a system of power relations, and although they have choices, they need to understand their strategic constraints. By and large, I would like to suggest that South Africa has failed or has been unable to develop a grand strategy. We definitely have projects, frameworks, plans, and policies, but we do not yet have a comprehensive, agreed, or actionable worldview that allows us to understand and share consensus at a leadership level of how the South African political economy seeks to compete, shape itself, or transform itself in the future. This is because in many ways, history dominates our thinking, and there's an absence of a believable view as to what the future could and must look like. Maybe the NDP is that framework. Time will tell. I've believed for many years and continue to believe that South Africa is a frontier society. The idea of the frontier in academic circles originated in the United States as America expanded westwards. The leading scholar of frontier theory was Jackson Turner, who was the first scholar to seriously seek to conceptualize the nature of a frontier. According to Jackson Turner, a frontier is an open space that is contested. At the far extreme of most frontiers is a stable and well-established order. At the other extreme is openness, conflict, friction, and opportunity. Simply put, in a frontier, there are three modalities, 
if you translate them into a metaphor or an image, one is a fort, the second is a farm, and the third is the open felt. In terms of who occupies a frontier, there might be five kinds of human interaction. Explorers are those who go first. We name the mountains after those that get back. They are followed, they are followed by pioneers who move in and out of the frontier, and then settlers, and then in terms of the frontier schema, finally, citizens. Citizens are permanent, authentic, and belong fully where they are. The final category are colonists who are exploiting the situation but may not truly belong. In terms of strategic archetypes, there are a variety of strategic options in a frontier. There's entry and extraction, long-term accumulation, and as importantly as the frontier closes or settles, long-term commitment. Given the longer view of history, we have been a democracy in a, for a blink of the Buddha's eye. Democracy is no easy mistress, and balancing out competing interests and meeting expectations is extraordinarily challenging for any state. In my view, in South Africa, the frontier has not yet closed. I would argue that South Africa remains, mainly because of its economic and political history, but also because of its geophysical nature, its cultures, its diversity, its location in the world and economy, a frontier society. In current times, our economy is open, significantly dominated by large companies and multinationals, and we have a highly traded currency. There's fluidity within our institutions, and certainly as we look to the future, north of South Africa, there's an enormous land mass and an extraordinary range of possibilities from which we may derive, in the long run, our economic, cultural, and political future.